good evening everyone i'm sorry for the lateness today the lecture was supposed to be for three o'clock but due to some certain things we were not able to start three that was why we had to postpone it to five o'clock because we can't afford to miss this lecture thanks for joining us once again today my name is dr abiola olushegun i'm a naturopathic consultant what we want to discuss today is infertility infertility in both male and female to know the causes of infertility to know the control how to control it to know how to prevent yourself from going through this problem that is actually what we are going to discuss today and before we start this lecture i will urge you to please and please Help us share this video. Share this video. Like and share it so that people that are not watching us now can benefit from it. And other people that are actually going through this can also benefit from it. And also, please, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Help us subscribe on our YouTube channel. So what we are going to into today is infertility. What is infertility? It is the failure of a couple to become pregnant after one year of regular unprotected intercourse in both men and women the fertility process is complex when a man and a woman get married within a year you can't conclude that they are going through infertility until they have had regular and unprotected intercourse and it is after a year, that is when you can assume that, okay, this can be an issue of infertility. And infertility affects about 10% of all couples. About a third of infertility problems are due to female infertility. And another third are due to male infertility. There are some causes of infertility in both male and female mostly we have said it that it will cause in female and there are some causes of infertility in female we have ovulation problems ovulation problems is, is part of the causes of infertility in female there are some signs that a woman is not ovulating normally that is what we call ovulation problem and it is often caused by PCOS that's polycystic ovarian syndrome and when a woman is not ovulating normally there can be irregular or absent menstruation so this PCOS is a hormonal imbalance that can interfere with normal ovulation and it is the most common cause of female infertility. There are other causes of infertility in women. And even under this ovulation problem, weight can be an issue. Because it, although most of a woman's estrogen is, estrogen is manufactured in her ovaries, about 30% of it is produced by fat cells which transform male hormones produced by the adrenal glands into estrogen because the normal hormone balance is essential for the process of conception. Extreme weight levels, either high or low, can contribute to infertility. So when a woman is overweight, when a woman is obese, it can contribute to infertility in various ways. And when a woman is underweight, when for body fat level is 10 to 15 percent below normal it can completely shut down the reproductive process and th there are some women at risk of this women with eating disorders such as anorexia that's loss of appetite or women that have chronic eating disorder they suffer from this women on very low calorie calorie or restrictive diets are at risk of it also, especially if their periods are irregular. Then street vegetarians might have difficulties if they lack important nutrients such as vitamin B12, zinc, iron, and folic acid. 
Then marathon runners too, dancers and others who exercise very intensely can, can actually be affected by this. They can have ovulation problems. Then smoking, cigarette smoking can arm a woman's ovaries and it can contribute to a decrease in health. Women who smoke are more likely to reach menopause earlier than women who do not smoke. Then alcohol and caffeine use. Alcohol and caffeine use may contribute to infertility in both men and women. Even drinking lightly can reduce the likelihood of conception. Then environmental factors. Exposure to environmental hazards such as herbicides, pesticides, and industrial solvents may affect fertility. Estrogen-like chemicals that interfere with normal hormones are of particular concern for infertility in men and for effects of offspring in women. So all these we have mentioned can actually lead to ovulation problems in women. Then another cause of infertility is infection. Vaginal yeast infection, also known as candidiasis, a common female condition. A healthy vagina has bacteria and some yeast cells, but when the balance of bacteria and yeast changes, the yeast cells can multiply. This causes intense itching, swelling, and irritation. There are some symptoms of infection. One is vagina itching, swelling around the vagina, burning during urination or sex, pain during sex, sunness, redness, rash, or white is gray and clumpy vagina discharge. These are symptoms of infection. Then there are some causes of infection, which are antibiotics. Antibiotics can lower the amount of good bacteria in the vagina when taken in excess. Another one is pregnancy. Infection tends to occur during pregnancy because of changes in the immune system, increased production of glycogen and higher estrogen levels. Then uncontrolled diabetes. This is because diabetes can cause blood vessel disease. Your white blood cells can't always get where they need to fight off germs. So this allows germs like bacteria, viruses, and fungi to invade your body and cause infection. Then weak immune system. Weak immune system. There are so many disorders that can weaken the immune system and cause a person to become immunocompromised. So... Even not eating a balanced diet and eating too much of fatty foods can throw your immune out of balance. Milk destroys immunity. And then poor eating habits, including a lot of sugary foods. You must, you must watch your, your fat intake, your, your sugary foods intake. When you, are, when you just eat anything anyhow, it can cause infection. Then hormonal imbalance near your menstrual circle. If you are close to your menstrual circle, you need to watch yourself. Watch your hormones. There are certain things that, that makes hormones thrown out of balance. Even not sleeping regularly, not having enough rest can make you go into hormonal imbalance. So if you are experiencing hormonal imbalance near your menstrual circle, it can cause infection. Then stress, stress. During periods of chronic stress, the adaptive immune system is suppressed due to continued high levels of stress. And as a result, your body is slower at healing wounds and less able to produce antibodies and more susceptible to viral infections. And lack of sleep. During sleep, your immune system releases proteins called cytokines. Some of these cytokines help promote sleep. And certain cytokines need to increase when you have an infection or inflammation or when you are under stress. So sleep deprivation may increase production of these protective cytokines.
So you need to watch this. It's not that you sleep by 12 o'clock and wake up by 4 o'clock. This is what we call this sleep disorder. I always tell my patients, even if you have a chance to sleep in the afternoon, even just for one hour, it is very, very okay. It is better to have a sound sleep. Even if you sleep for just six hours per day and you have a sound sleep, it is still okay. And there are some preventions of this infection. There are some things you need to do to prevent infection. One is eat a well-balanced diet. Make sure you are eating a balanced diet. Eat LD. You can take you guts, but not in excess. Then wear natural fibers such as cotton, lining, or silk. Don't wear something that is too thick. Don't wear underwear that is too thick. Then your underwear, you can wash it in hot water. But it's not that you soak your underwears today and you wash it next week. No. If you soak your underwear, you must wash them that same day. Then replace your feminine products frequently. Replace your all this frequently. Don't use your pants for more than three, five years. It's, it's not advisable. And avoid wearing tight pants. Avoid wearing tight pants and leggings. Then avoid using feminine deodorant or, or scented tampons or pads. Sitting around in wet clothing is not good, especially in bathing suits. And I always advise that you wipe your vagina. Maybe after you urinate and you clean your vagina, wipe it. Don't use soap to wash your vagina. Wipe your vagina after cleaning. Don't let the water dry there. Then it's good to avoid sitting in hot tubs or taking frequent hot tub baths. Avoid it. Then avoid douching. Avoid it totally. Then another cause of infertility is hormonal imbalance. This is not, this doesn't affect only women. It affects men also. Hormones are chemical messengers that impact the way your cells and organs function. And hormonal imbalance is vital to a healthy, cancer-free mind and body, but can be disrupted in many ways. There are some causes of hormonal imbalance. This hormonal imbalance is deeply connected to the food we eat. I've told us that we must eat healthy, eat a balanced diet. It is connected to the exercise we get. The toxins we have sub, the weight we carry, because when you are overweight, thirty percent of estrogen is produced by fat cells. So when you have too much of estrogen, your hormone will be thrown out of balance, and being underweight can shut down reproductive process below ten to fifteen percent. Then the stress levels we put up weight. I've told us before, avoid stress. Avoid stress because prolonged stress tears up our bones. It melts our muscles. It robs us of strength, energy. It lowers our libido and overwhelms our immunities, putting us at risk of chronic illness and autoimmune disease. And excess carbohydrates, especially in refined foods and sugars that are not needed for energy, are stored as fats. And increased body fat increases your estrogen levels. And increased estrogen levels lead to estrogen dominance, which, as we already know, leads to increased risk of cancer. So, there are some symptoms of hormonal imbalance. One is persistent weight gain. You need to change your diet. Watch what you take in. Eat a balanced diet. Eat LD. Then belly fat and loss of muscle mass. This is part of the symptoms of hormonal imbalance because when your endocrine system is under stress, there is an underproduction of certain hormones and an overproduction of others, mainly cortisol. So this makes your body store fat for future use making an increase in belly fat a clue to adrenal fatigue. 
Then another one is low libido. Low libido is one of the most noticeable symptoms of hormonal imbalance. And this starts with disturbed sleep. Without quality sleep, our sex hormone production can diminish. Then, fatigue. Too much progesterone. Progesterone is an hormone. Too much progesterone can make you more tired. And another common hormonal imbalance that causes fatigue is low thyroid hormone levels. That is hypothyroidism. Then, anxiety, irritability, and depression. Not feeling like yourself. Anxiety and depression are clues that you have an imbalance. Toxicity and overworked, stressed out, and most likely are not nourishing. They won't nourish your body the way it needs. So you need to avoid depression. You need to avoid overworking. You need to avoid being stressed out because it won't nourish your body the way it needs. Then insomnia and poor sleep patterns. This starts the cycle of physical stress and it increases cortisol levels, that stress hormone, which directly causes many hormonal imbalances. There is no area in your life that insomnia doesn't touch. Then sweating. For many women, nice sweats and hot flashes are the first uncomfortable sign that something is amiss. You can begin a food journal by jotting down what you eat and drink, how you feel physically, and any emotions that come after. Then another one is digestive problems. Gas, bloating and slow digestion are common hormonal problems that are not usually associated with hormonal imbalances. So, this can be associated with eating bad foods, not chewing your food and eating too much. When you're not chewing your food very well, even if it's swallow foods you are eating, it is good to chew them very well before you swallow. When you don't have optimal digestion, your body is starving because of poor nutrient extraction. Then, Cravings. Craving is a common cause of hormonal imbalance. And common causes of cravings and excess eating are adrenal fatigue, insulin resistance, and other hormonal imbalances. But when you minimize sugars, alcohol, dairy, and wheat, though this is difficult, but when you can minimize them, not only will it help control cravings, but it will also help your digestive issues as well. Then, headache is another symptom of hormonal imbalance. Heavy or irregular menstruation is part of it too. Then in men, men, when men are suffering from hormonal imbalance, there are some symptoms that can be seen in them. One is development of breast tissue. Then, they might be experiencing breast tenderness, erectile dysfunction, loss of muscle mass, decreased sex drive, infertility, decrease in beard and body hair loss, then difficulty concentrating. These are the symptoms that men can actually be feeling when they have hormonal imbalance. Then there are some things we can actually do to prevent hormonal imbalance one is you keep your stress levels low avoid your avoid stress then get enough sleep at night maintain a healthy diet eat more omega-3 fatty acids avoid caffeine caffeine most of the energy drinks we take in the includes caffeine most of them includes caffeine the mineral you take includes caffeine. Even the Lipton you take contains caffeine. So avoid caffeine. Then exercise frequently. Don't say because we are telling you to rest because of hormonal imbalance that you now sit in a place from morning to night. 
exercise frequently, but not a strenuous exercise. Then get sunshine. Let the sun shine in. Take a good quality of vitamins and mineral. You can actually get vitamins and minerals from your food too. When you take fruits and vegetables, you can get your vitamins and minerals. There are some fruits that when you, when you blend them, you get more of the vitamins and minerals you need from them. You can get them from your vegetables too. You can blend raw, blend raw vegetables and drink. You get much of the vitamins and minerals from it. Then another, another, another cause of infertility we want to discuss now is fallopian tube blockage. This is affecting most women. There are some patients that actually come and they might come with their husbands. And when you test them, you see that what they are suffering from is tubal blockage. Because the fallopian tubes are, they are the two thin tubes. One on each side of the uterus. And it helps lead the mature egg from the ovaries to the uterus. But when an obstruction prevents the egg from traveling down the tube, a woman has a blocked fallopian tube. And it is also known as tubal factor infertility. This can occur on, on one or both sides of the fallopian tubes. And it is the cause of infertility in 40% of infertile women. Many women don't know they actually have blocked fallopian tubes unless they go for diagnosis. Diagnosis, and if one or both fallopian tubes are blocked, the head cannot reach the uterus, and the sperm cannot reach the head. This will prevent fertilization and pregnancy. It is also possible for the tube not to be blocked totally; it might be blocked partially, and this can increase the risk of a tubal pregnancy or ectopic pregnancy. It might look like the womb has wound. The uterus will be swollen and it will be closing up and ovaries will not function well. So it is better to go for diagnosis if you are experiencing, experiencing these symptoms. I'm going to tell you these symptoms I'm going to mention, it is better to go for diagnosis than experiencing ectopic pregnancy. Because when you have ectopic pregnancy and you go to the hospital, the only thing they will advise you to do is to flush it out. That is why it is better to treat yourself. Make sure you are okay. Go through diagnosis. If you know that you are experiencing infertility, and you are going through these symptoms. One is unusual vaginal discharge. Though it is not every woman that experiences this symptom. But some women experience unusual vaginal discharge. Then some will be experiencing pelvic pain. Pelvic pain. Painful intercourse. Some women, when they are having sex, they feel so much pain. And another one is painful urination. Painful bowel movements, severe abdominal pain, lower back pain, every period and spotting between periods, then fatigue. All these are symptoms of fallopian tube blockage. So when you are going through this, you need to go for diagnosis to be sure if your fallopian tube is blocked or not. And the most common cause of Blocked fallopian tube is pelvic inflammatory disease, PID. PID is the result of a sexually transmitted disease. But it is not all pelvic infections that are related to STDs. That's sexually trans transmitted disease. Also, even if PID, that's pelvic inflammatory disease, is no longer present, a history of PID or pelvic infection increases the risk of blocked tubes. So women need to be very, very careful. Then there are other potential causes of fallopian tube uh, blockage. 
One is current or history of an STD infection, specifically chlamydia or gonorrhea. Then history of uterine infection caused by an abortion or miscarriage. History of ruptured appendix. History of abdominal surgery. Previous ectopic pregnancy. Prior surgery involving fallopian tubes. Endometriosis. Endometriosis this is the complete inflammation of the uterus. The linings of the uterus will be swollen and it makes tubes block. Fibroid. Fibroid is another um, causes of tuber blockage. Presence of fibroids can block the tube. Then another one is structural problems of the reproductive system. This usually involves the presence of abnormal tissue in the fallopian tubes or uterus. And if the fallopian tubes are blocked, eggs will not be able to move from the ovaries to the uterus and sperm will not be able to reach the egg for fertilization. Then another cause of infertility we want to say now is fibroid. Fibroid. Most women experience this. In fact, if you're an African woman, you are prone to fibroid. Fibroid is also genetic. Our lifestyle also matters when it comes to fibroid. Fibroid is the abnormal growth that develops in or on a woman's uterus. Men does not experience fibroid. The fibroid that actually call men's own is Aenea. But fibroid is mainly the disease of women. And most women, most women are suffering from this. Sometimes these tumors can become quite large and it can cause severe abdominal pain and heavy periods in other cases. They can cause no signs or symptoms at all. And there, there are some causes of fibroid. I've told us it is genetic. Family history of fibroid. If your mother has fibroid, you are prone to heat. If your sister has fibroid, you are prone to heat. So family history of fibroid can make you develop it. Then pregnancy. Pregnancy increases the production of estrogen and progesterone in your body. Then being over the age of 30, especially when you are not yet married, after the age of 30, this can also contribute to the development of fibroid. Then having a high body weight. That is why I'm always emphasizing on our diet and lifestyle. When you have a high body weight, you can develop fibroid. Then eating sugary or fatty foods. You really need to watch your diet. Your lifestyle can make you develop fibroid, even if it is not in your family history. Your lifestyle can make you develop it. Then there's the, some symptoms of fibroid. One is heavy bleeding between or during periods that includes blood clots. Most women suffer from this. Even when they are going, I see some women will not be able to leave a spot because the blood will be gushing out. This is because of fibroid. Then another one is pain in the pelvis or lower back. When you have fibroid, you can be feeling pains in your pelvic area and lower back. Then increased menstrual cramping. Women that have fibroid, when they are menstruating, it is not easy at all. They have serious menstrual cramping. Then pain during intercourse, they usually experience pain during intercourse, then their menstruation lasts longer than usual. They might be feeling pressure or fullness in the lower abdomen. Then frequent urination, they tend to urinate frequently. 
when you have fibroid blood and you are urinating frequently, it doesn't mean that you have diabetes. Fibroid blood also causes frequent urination. Then develop uh, that's a uh, difficulty emptying the bladder. This is part of the symptoms of fibroid. Then constipation. Constipation. It might be hard for them to pass through. So constipation is part of the symptoms of fibroid. Then backache, leg pains. These are part of the symptoms of fibroid. And another causes of infertility we will discuss now is ovarian cyst. Ovarian cyst is an infection that generates to a growth. It can also grow in the, in the uterus, that's the endometrium. And there are, there are, there are sac-like structure within the ovary which contains liquid, semi-solid substance. There are some symptoms that women with ovarian cyst pass through. One is pain in the abdomen or the pelvis that radiates to the lower back. This pain can be, can be also at the sides of the pelvic, can be at both sides. Then indigestion. Indigestion can also be affecting them. Vomiting. They can be experiencing this when they have ovarian cysts. Then unusual bleeding. Mostly, this occurs when the ovarian cyst is large, when it is big, when the size is big. This occurs. Then they have breast pain. They can be experiencing breast pain when they have ovarian cyst. Menstruation is also part of the symptoms of ovarian cyst. Then pain when passing a stool. This is also part of the symptoms. And when, when, this, when the ovarian cyst is large in size, there are some severe symptoms that women go through. They can be experiencing fever. So women can experience faintness and dizziness. And they can experience bursting. That's when the ovarian cyst bursts. This is when it causes bleeding. And it's, it might be infected by them. Then this can also cause cancer because ovarian cyst is actually an early form of ovarian cancer. So if you have ovarian cyst, it is better you treat it on time. Then too much of milk, sweet things, breaks down body immunity. And it makes it easy for tumors and growth to occur. So we need to watch our diet. We need to watch our lifestyle. The prevention of ovarian cyst. One is don't soak your undies for more than a day. Don't soak it for more than a day. And when you want to rinse your undies, you can rinse with the top and warm water. Then clean your toilet regularly. Wash your hands after using the toilet. Then change your pad because pad is always eating up. Change your pad regularly. Then in men, men also go through infertility when they have prostate disorder. When they have prostatitis, which is inflammation in the prostate gland. When they have enlargement of the prostate gland. And there are some causes of prostate disorder. Sitting too much can affect men. Sitting too much, especially, especially drivers. Men that drive a lot. Men that travel a lot. Sitting too much usually affects them because of the heat. So they can develop um, prostate enlargement. There can be inflammation of the prostate. Then infection. Infection is part of what affects men. It's part of what causes infertility in men. And irritation of the prostate due to excessive sexual excitement. Men that have more than one partner, that have sex 
with more than one partners. This can cause irritation to the prostate. Then cycling, men that cycles a lot. This can also cause prostate disorder. Then wearing tight pants, some men still wear pants now at this. It is not advisable. It is not advisable because of the testing. So don't wear tight pants. It is better you wear boxers. Let it be free. Don't wear something tight. And I always advise men that they should always change their boxers every day. One boxer per day. Because some men don't believe that their, that, that their boxers are always dirty. They don't believe in it. So men, some men don't even believe that they, they have infection. This is part of the things that causes infection. So change your boxers regularly. Don't wear one boxer for, for one week. It is not good. Then holding back urine. Holding back urine is part of what causes prostate disorder. When you feel the urge to urinate, you go and urinate immediately. Don't hold your urine. Then holding back spam. When a man is having sex and you are about to release, please do so. Don't hold it back because you are not yet satisfied or because your woman is not yet satisfied. Don't hold back spam. It is not advisable. It causes prostate disorder. If prostates are enlarged or they are inflamed and it is left untreated, it can become cancerous. And infection also causes enlargement and it can also affect the kidney because the kidney, the bladder and the prostate are close to each other. So it is very, very bad. Men need to watch themselves too. All this we have mentioned are the causes of infertility. And we have mentioned how you can prevent, how you can control infertility. This is where we we'll stop for today. Please kindly like and share this video for other people that are not watching us now to also benefit from it. Because there are so many people that are suffering from this issue. And they have been going through a lot in treating, overcoming it, preventing it but are still suffering from it so please help us like and share this video to people so that they can also watch and benefit from this then please and please subscribe to our youtube channel subscribe to our youtube channel if you need more information on this topic or you have other issues you want us to help, help you with you can contact us and speak with a doctor on 081-04-60-7130. And you can also visit our website on www.mbholistichealthcare.com.ng. And you can follow us on our social media. You can follow us on Instagram at mbholistic underscore care. On Twitter at mbcare. You can follow us on Facebook too at MB Health Care. Your health is supreme. MB Kiss.